Boom, greetings all. Last Outrider here with another video. Who are the Death Watch? Let's get to it with an opening quote. How many have given their lives in service to humanity? Their names never to be recorded. Their deeds never to be celebrated. The Death Watch seeks not laurels. It is sufficient that the Emperor knows our names and our deeds. Death Watch Brother Sergeant Gallus, three days before his death at the claws of an uberlord of the Nebulax Diaspora. The Imperial Cult preaches that mankind is the pinnacle of creation, that it is his manifest destiny to cleanse the stars of the stain of all other forms of intelligent life and to claim what is rightfully his. Man's form is cast after that of the emperor, who is the perfect human being and the supreme life form. This doctrine is not the product of petty intolerance, but rather it is a matter of racial survival. For almost every intelligent life form that humanity has ever encountered in the limitless void has proven to be hostile, pernicious, duplicitous, or simply so evil that it cannot be allowed to continue existing. The Imperium of Man lays claim to two-thirds of the entire galaxy, a volume of space encompassing billions of star systems and untold numbers of planets. Evidence of hundreds, even thousands, of stellar empires long since reduced to dust is found across the entire galaxy. Only one in several hundred thousand of the galaxy's systems is host to a human population, whilst the majority of the remainder are worthless or uninhabitable. Alien races claim a great many more. Ever since mankind first set foot amongst the stars, these alien races have denied his right to do so. And humanity has been at war with almost every other intelligent life form in the galaxy. This ongoing war is made all the more bitter by the very nature of the Imperium. The Emperor's domains are not a discrete volume of space with definable, defensible borders within which mankind rules absolute. Rather, each world is one of many hundreds, even thousands, in a sector, only a few dozen of which may be occupied by humans. Many of the other worlds in the region may not even have been explored, and any number could be home to the vilest of alien races. This situation is as true on the galactic scale as it is on the regional level. The million or so worlds of the Imperium are as tiny islands scattered across a sea that seethes with predators. Entire alien civilizations might even exist within a few light years of major imperial worlds. And only a few in the Imperium dare to ponder over long what might exist beyond the eastern fringe. 
within the roiling galactic core or amongst the silent and cold halo stars. Little wonder then that mankind is engaged in a continuous struggle for its own survival. Even it were, even were it not for the constant intercene wars and the predators of the warp, humanity would be hard pressed to prevail against the other races of the galaxy. The average man is taught from birth to abhor the alien, to hate it with such zeal that should he ever face an abomination, he will not sink to his knees in terror, but stand tall and strike it down, his arm strengthened by his unshakable faith in the emperor. Such faith is only possible thanks to the lessons preached by the Adeptus Ministorum, who instill such hatred in their congregations that even the most terrifying of alien beasts holds no fear for the faithful. Yet, while faith allows a man to stand firm in the face of unholy abomination, it cannot make his body impervious to the alien's blows, nor can the attentions of whatever vile and deadly microbial life it may host. Against many alien foes, the only forces capable of fighting are the space marines of the Adeptus Estarde, for their hearts are hardened against fear. Their bodies are proof against almost any attack, and their weapons and armor are superior to almost anything they might face. For 10,000 years, the space marines have stood against the very worst the galaxy can throw against mankind, defeating wave after wave of alien invader and taking the battle to whatever vile crucibles of blasphemy gave birth to them. Yet, there exist some alien threats against which even the space marines are hard pressed to prevail. Some aliens are so utterly evil, their very nature so disgusting, their methods so malevolent, their intentions so wicked, that a unique dedicated force is required to combat them. That force is the Death Watch. The Death Watch is a space marine chapter, but one quite different from every other chapter known to exist. There are many things that set the Death Watch apart from their fellow battle brothers. The first of which is the fact that the chapter's brethren are not permanent members, but seconded from other chapters for a specific mission or a set period of time. Not all chapters dispatch their battle brothers to serve in the Death Watch. But for those that do, the service does great honor to both the individual brother and to the chapter as a whole. The origins of this practice are lost to history, but certainly many chapters have undertaken terrible oaths to provide their most experienced alien fighters 
were never called upon to do so. Such an honor is afforded to a space marine that has served in the death watch, that many continue to bear the chapter's distinctive heraldic shoulder plate even once they have returned to their parent chapter. The second point that marks the chapter out as unusual is the fact that the Death Watch is almost exclusively engaged with the fight against the alien. That is not to say the chapter avoids confrontation by any means with other foes, but the vast majority of its missions are against the many and varied Xenos races that threaten mankind. The warriors that join the ranks of the Death Watch are always those with the most experience of fighting against alien warriors. They have faced every kind of alien threat and prevailed. They have faced the impure blasphemies of the noisome reek and emerged untainted. They have entered the dark nightmare of the Hrud Warrens and scoured those vile places clean. They have resisted the domination of the mind-eating crave rewarding those inexplicable life forms with death. In short, they have entered the darkest places in the galaxy, faced what terrors lurk there, and emerged victorious. The warriors of the Death Watch are amongst the most potent defenders of humanity, without whom a thousand Xenos races might have overwhelmed mankind centuries ago. Lastly, and perhaps most significant of all the differences between the Death Watch and its brother chapters, is the fact that its mission is, broadly, directed not by the dictates of a single chapter master, responsible only for his own brethren, but by the alien hunting inquisitors of the Ordo Xenos. This arm of the Inquisition concerns itself primarily with the detection, study, containment, and eradication of alien threats, and the Death Watch is sometimes referred to as its chamber militant. While an individual inquisitor is no match for an entire horde of slathering alien monstrosities, the Death Watch were created with the specific purpose of defeating such a foe. And the two organizations work together very closely in the ceaseless war against the vile Xenos. And that gives you the foundation to understand the Imperium's relationship with aliens in the 40k universe, which is very different from humans' relations with aliens in, say, Star Trek or Star Wars, where apparently humans are capable of having sex with virtually every alien species they encounter. <clears throat> Next time, origins of the Death Watch. Until then, bye. Mm -hmm.